Hey everyone, welcome back to Like a Boss, featured here on the Grit Daily News Channel. I'm Laurel Mears, your host of the show, and well, let's get right to it. We've got a guest today from Israel. Her name is Josie Nakash, and she's recognized as the go-to expert for all things startup. She's got a tremendous philosophy and background as a serial entrepreneur. What she's really tapping into is the level of human connection and how things are not only in need of shifting now in light of the pandemic, but how the whole assimilation of events over time have started to drive us down that path where we have to be more aware of the human connections that we're making in order to really accelerate our personal and professional growth. So with that, let's welcome Josie. Hey, Josie. Hi, Lauren. And thanks for having me. I'm so honored. Well, we're really glad to have you here because you've got this unique perspective, not only the experience that you have in working with startups and all kinds of CEO founders, not just in Israel, but around the world, because you're tapping into something that I've already alluded to in that human connection. Can you say a little bit more about that? Yes, we're heading into a stage, we're heading out of the old, (laughs) this whole situation is about us leaving behind the egoistic stage, and we're heading into an integral stage, and we're going to have to make all kinds of adjustments, and it's a very human stage of business, and what I'm seeing happening is really all these companies and all these amazing, amazing, talented people around me on LinkedIn and very evolved people. I'm seeing a lot of people just taking what they were doing before, patching it up a bit, making it a bit more virtual, talking about diversity and inclusion and equality and you know, sounding like conscious leaders and talking about values and purpose and everything. And really, they just think you know, we can just take everything we were doing in the previous egoistic stage into the next stage. And that's not going to work. The only companies that are going to be really successful in the next stage are companies that are thinking about connection, about really establishing good human connections, you know, really big adjustments because, you know, everyone, of course, was focused on, you know, making a lot of money and profit and quarterly reports and all those things. And now the focus is going to have to be on good positive human relations. Women have a very key role in this next stage. Okay, so let's dig into that because you said a lot of things in there. So there's a couple of things that I want to tease out a little bit more. First, I think you're spot on that contemporizing old methodologies has been a good band-aid to kind of get us through the pandemic, but they're not going to be able to allow us to move forward. We need transformational thinking that starts at the individual, right? Yes. So now we're going into a a stage where we have to relearn, you know, to speak to each other, to listen to each other, and to really, really connect properly with humans around us. You know, it's for how are we going to maximize human potential? That's what this is all about. Look at our kids. Look at all the bad examples they're exposed to on a daily basis. Thousands and thousands of negative examples of human behavior they they grow up in an environment where they see it's perfectly okay to put other people down and you know hit other people and all the violence and and then we're surprised when kids get up and grab a gun and go you know shoot the kids in their classroom and we we need to create environments and we need to consciously create environments of positive human connection and that's what the future of the workplace is that's what the future of education is Another thing that you've tapped into here and alluded to a few times in your comments is around this notion of boys and toys, but we've also seen that women intuitively just have a bit of a better ability, they're maybe more dialed into it, more aware, more conscious of the importance of building relationships and how to form those connections. And that's why I think we're starting to see the rise of women leadership. I think it's really going to start to skyrocket. But In reality, even though they have amazing ideas and intuitively know what is the best thing for their people and um, they're pushing in a certain direction, they are still playing in a man's world. In a man's world, I'm just, you know, I'm using the the high-tech industry I have in my head here in Israel, very, very technology-focused. It's all, you know, about the technology, how much, you know, uh, the millions that we raised, uh, how many people we have in our company. You know, it's all a measurement contest all the time. 
this new stage is about women coming forward, stepping up, helping each other up, pulling each other up. So let's bring it full circle then. When you talk about men or anyone in general, not you specifically, you Josie, but men have been preconditioned over time to be builders. Women have been preconditioned over time to be connectors, right? To forge those bonds with their children, to build the family unit. And so I think it's going to take some time until the roles start to normalize, where there's a better understanding of what each side can bring to the table and all of those different perspectives too, that go well beyond gender. So with that, with all the exposure you have to all these new startups that are being formed, what's your best advice for the next generation of founders, particularly women? Well, first of all, the part of this whole learning process that we're going through, we're going to discover how the perfect, the genders complement each other perfectly. And when we discover that, we are going to discover the key to our sustainability, the key to our fulfillment. We don't need to compete. We don't need to compare the genders. Uh, we don't need to try to be like the other gender. We're, we're on the verge of discovering that. And that's also part of uh, the method the, that we do, the CEO Collective, the integral method. Everybody has a very clear idea of their unique point and what their unique purpose and what they have to do as an individual and also as collectively. But my advice for entrepreneurs is really to focus on the companies where I've seen them crash the worst is where there's egos clashing at the top of the company. The founders, the founders not getting along and arguing all the time, you know, just it's all like posing and it's all just trying to see who's best, who's right. You know, companies that start out like that are going to crash and burn. Companies that start out more like uh, hiring their brothers or, you know, people that are really, really close from childhood, um, really, really close from the army. We go through the army here together in Israel. So those companies for sure have a much better foundation starting point. There you go. I I'm always happy to it. talk to. I'm always happy to talk to in, entrepreneurs, which is fantastic. And we're going to say, like, flip it around. How can our audience help you, Josie? I'm looking for leaders who are willing to experiment. I'm not telling them um, turn your whole company upside down. Of course, you know you have run a company, millions of dollars and everything. But right now, I feel a lot of companies are spending a lot of time, energy, and resources doing the same things that they did before. And I understand, you know, it's a, it's a scary time, but the whole point of the integral method is it creates this collective intelligence that allows you to advance in a very clear way. So take 10 people from your company and let's do a pilot. And this is so important and timely right now because we're emotionally disconnected more than ever. We're socially distanced. We're not even physically together, let alone emotionally connected. So an integral approach, I think, can really help to transform things. So, all right, Josie, last question here. We've talked about a lot of heavy and important subjects. <laughs> this one is a little more fun, and it's our signature question of the Like a Boss podcast. If we peeked into your closet, and we looked at all of the shoes there. Is there a pair of shoes that's going to best reflect your personality? And is that pair of shoes boots, sneakers, flats, flip-flops, or something else? Sneakers and flip-flops, for sure. <laughs> I'm a very sporty person. Well, fantastic. All right. Thank you again to Josie Nakash, founder of the CEO Collective, who's driving forward the integral method to really bring that human connection into the office place and into the workspace so that we can all work together more effectively as humans. Thank you so much, Josie. Thank you, Laura Lynn. Thanks for listening. And if you'd like to be a guest on our show, well, why don't you apply? You can contact Julia at gritdaily.com. And how about that fantastic intro by Touch Circle?